Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan. Wonderful news announced on Monday that the Campaign for Global Development, which is the think tank that decided to dispense with Maya Forstater's services, allegedly because of her reality-based views, would not be contesting the Appeal Tribunal judgment that these views, basically the views that sex is real, immutable, and more important than so-called gender identity, are worthy of protection under the law. Now, when somebody in the comments below one of my recent videos asked me to respond to Katie Montgomery prattling on about Maya, I said I'd rather eat my own head than have to endure one of Katie's videos. I'd already tried to watch one or other of them a couple of times, but I don't have that much patience with people who are as boring and inarticulate as he is. But then I was a bit curious as to what this guy has to say about Maya, so I bit the bullet and had a look. And afterwards, I just wished I'd eaten my own head instead. And I'm sure if he ever watches this, he'll wish it too. But I don't suppose he ever will watch it because it's probably far too violent for him. Katie does raise expectations by saying at the beginning, This is Turf Wars. This is the show where we go through the last week's worth of gender critical, uh, turf, um, transphobic, anti-trans nonsense, and we debunk it together, we laugh at it together, we despair at it together. We debunk it together? Who's we? It appears that a trans activist who might possibly have some kind of multiple personality disorder is going to attempt to debunk something said by a feminist. That's something I've always wanted to see, and I've not seen it so far, so good luck with that. If by any chance you don't know who Maya is, you could do worse than visit my website at petrans.org where I have a page of links to news stories and features about her legal cases. So this is probably the major news story of the week. Um, Mayor Forstater, who is the lady who JK Rowling come out with her um, out of the closet where, <laughs> to, to reveal her transphobia to the world. This was like what inspired her. Translation. JK Rowling publicly tweeted her support for Maya Forstater thus. And if you don't know who JK Rowling is, nah, just kidding, but I do, of course, have a page on my website with links to many of the reports and articles written after she stuck her head above the parapet. It includes a link to that essay in which JK Rowling said awful, hateful things like trans people need and deserve protection. I want trans women to be safe. Trans rights are human rights, and of course, trans lives matter. And finally, all I'm asking, all I want is for similar empathy, similar understanding to be extended to the many millions of women whose sole crime is wanting their concerns to be heard without receiving threats and abuse. And of course, wanting women's concerns to be heard without fear of threats and abuse and violence is like the most transphobic thing ever. So JK has been vilified and subjected to the filthiest abuse ever since. That is trans activism. Oh, and here are a couple of pictures taken in London on Saturday. That is trans pride. We are all, I am sure, weary of the hate and the abuse levelled at us by the gender nutters, as well as the lies told and the stupidity displayed. I've watched at least part of quite a few videos by trans cultists now, and I would say they are all guilty, at least to some extent, of deliberate dishonesty. All have been at least a bit thick, and most noticeable has been the gratuitous and repeated use of words like Transphobe, transphobic, transphobia, anti-trans, bigot, bigotry, hate, haters, hatred, and increasingly now we are seeing right-wing, racist, Nazi, white supremacist, etc. I've come to see it as a form of brainwashing. I wouldn't care to say who is doing the brainwashing and who is simply spreading these nonsense ideas because they are, in effect, brainwashed. What I can say is that it is largely successful. That's why so many people seem to genuinely think JK Rowling is a transphobe, even though many trans people have publicly stated that she isn't and that they stand with her. Of course, when you ask them what exactly she has said or done that is transphobic, they either don't answer at all or they attribute to her things she has never 
said or done or and I saw this one a couple of days ago they call her objection to language that reduces women to their bodily functions transphobic trying to change the language out of deference to the feelings of a tiny minority is really cult-like behavior that is absolutely typical of trans activists and that short clip I've shown of Katie indicates that he's cut from the same sickly baby pink and blue cloth as the worst of them. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, Force data didn't have a contract renewed a while ago um, and there was a, a court case over it and then the judge found that she basically held views that warranted her being fired. I realise you find this legal stuff hard to understand, dear, but if you're going to talk about it at all, at least try to get it right. The tribunal on that occasion was not there to establish whether or not she warranted being fired and said nothing to that effect. It was a preliminary hearing to establish primarily whether her belief amounts to a philosophical belief under the Equality Act 2010. As the judge wrote, the claimant believes that sex is a material reality which should not be conflated with gender or gender identity. Being female is an immutable biological fact, not a feeling or an identity. Moreover, sex matters. It is important to be able to talk about and take action against the discrimination, violence and oppression that still affect women and girls because they were born female. The text of the Act is online, Katie, so there was really no need to go into your convoluted and frankly bizarre explanation of the legislation. But just for a laugh, let's listen to it anyway. So in the UK, we basically have two like grades of bullshit beliefs. There's things like if you don't think gay people should be able to get married, if you think abortion is murder, if you think that immigrants should get out or something, you know, if you have these like wank views, they're shit, but just for holding them, you can't be fired. If, if you know, if you log on to, um, some, you find someone's secret internet profile, someone at your work, and they're posting all this anti-abortion stuff, if they're just saying like abortion is murder or whatever, although they're wrong and that view is disgusting, you're not allowed to fire them for that because people are allowed to hold views. Um, and then there's the next level, which is, so that they're called like protected beliefs. And that's most things, most things are protected beliefs. And then there's like the next level up, which is like beyond disgusting, like Nazi exterminationist, um, or calling for extreme violence, um, you know, terrorism, that kind of stuff. And then if you're just discovered to hold those beliefs, it's okay to fire someone. Okay, maybe it wasn't that funny. Be grateful that I speeded it up and do the same with all the other clips of Katie. And I cut it short. I originally had to listen to that excruciating drivel at normal speed, which is much slower, and there was a load more of it. Is Katie deliberately dumbing down for his excessively dumb regular audience, or does he really think that is a fair and accurate description of legislation whose purpose was to consolidate, update and supplement several previous anti-discrimination laws? The Act says nothing about two grades of belief, let alone bullshit beliefs or wank beliefs, obviously. The Act applies to all beliefs that meet five criteria, and not all beliefs do. By beliefs, it means religious beliefs or philosophical beliefs. So humanism, pacifism, veganism would all be protected under the Act, but I don't suppose that believing in the Loch Ness Monster would be protected because that just means you're nuts. Right, the first criterion is that the belief must be genuinely held. The second is that it must be a belief and not just an opinion or viewpoint based on the present state of information available. I don't get that one. The third is that the belief must be about a weighty and substantial aspect of human life and behaviour. And the fourth is that the belief must attain a certain level of cogency, seriousness, cohesion and importance. So it's easy to see why views on either side of the climate change debate, the abortion debate, the gay marriage debate and the gender debate might meet those criteria and why believing in horoscopes and the Loch Ness Monster probably don't. But it was on the fifth criterion that the original tribunal judge rejected Meyer's case. This is that the beliefs must not be incompatible with human dignity and not be in conflict with the fundamental rights of others. That means beliefs such as Holocaust denial and racial superiority. It is quite extraordinary that the tribunal judge decided to reject her claim and the appeal judgment really takes it apart and criticises 
it very strongly on several grounds, with the result it feels like a far more decisive victory now than if she'd been successful first time round. That's partly, of course, because the case became world famous after J.K. Rowling tweeted in support and all the haters and gender fascists came crawling out of their ponds and they were all gloating after she lost. So another thing is what they defined gender critical as here. And they ended up focusing on gender critical being the belief that um, like sex can't change. That, that's like what they said being gender critical is. Just to clarify, that's not like what they said being gender critical is. I don't think it was the appeal tribunal's job to define what being gender critical is. Their job was to decide whether Maya's belief as set out in the original judgment amounted to a philosophical belief that could be protected under the Equality Act or whether the original tribunal judge had been correct in his judgment that it wasn't. Now, listen to how Katie explains it to the dummies. So that single asset, that single thing is a protected belief. But if you said, I am gender critical, so I believe sex can't change, and that also means I think we should put trans people into camps or whatever, um, then that wouldn't be covered because then even though you're holding that one little piece of belief which is protected, it's, you know, it's why you to say something a lot more extreme. That one little piece of belief, did he really say that? What is remarkable about what Katie just said, apart from the fact that he felt the need to say it at all, is that he couldn't confine himself to saying that the belief that sex is immutable, binary and important is now protected under the Equality Act, which is all Maya wanted but he has to explain that it doesn't mean we can also say something that none of us would ever dream of even thinking, let alone saying, in the first place. I believe that sex can't change, and that also means I think we should put trans people into camps or whatever. I believe elephants have trunks, and that also means that we should put them all into circuses or whatever. It's incongruous, but it's also absolutely in keeping with the idea that they are constantly promoting that it is women and our male allies who are the oppressors of the men who claim to be women. The fact that we refuse to kowtow and use their choice of pronouns and we don't want them in our spaces and sports is exactly the same as wanting them all rounded up and sent to camps, right? It's actually quite interesting. So one of the most, so that, that was like, that's like the headline of the ruling. And that's kind of what most of the newspapers focused on because they were all spinning it as a win for, um, you know, anti-trans people or whatever. No, they weren't spinning it. That's what you're doing, Katie Love. It was absolutely a win for free speech. As her solicitor said, this is a landmark decision. Gender critical beliefs are a protected characteristic. Those who hold and express those beliefs are protected from discrimination. That is what they were aiming for, Maya and her legal team. That is what they got. And it's a disaster for all of you so desperate to shut us up, at least here in England and Wales. So either get over it and shut up yourselves or die mad about it. So the judge ruled that just believing you can't change sex is like the protected belief. But if he'd also ruled that um, like your belief that you should be allowed to misgender someone was protected, then that would have been really grim because it would have meant that you, you could like... You couldn't discipline someone for misgendering and harassing trans people? Note how he slips the word harassing into the same clause as misgendering. He does that repeatedly, referring to people by correct pronouns, the ones that fit their sex. Refusing to go along with a lie is harassment, as far as Katie is concerned, and it's pathetic. It's exactly that kind of entitlement that makes me determined to resist. So the judge ruled that just believing you can't change sex is like the protected belief. So the, I think the best thing like um, about this case and kind of like the major point here and what, why I'm like relieved, like I genuinely feel relieved at this ruling of this case, because the judge specifically said uh, in like part B here, this judgment does not mean that those with gender critical beliefs can misgender trans pe persons with impunity. Which Maya said quite clearly she had no wish to do. What she said is that she would normally use a trans person's preferred pronouns, but reserves the right not to in certain circumstances. What the judgment doesn't say is that one can never refer to a trans person by their sex. 
if you were to refuse to allow a trans colleague to police your speech and that results in your being fired and you take it to a tribunal, your case will be viewed on its own merits. But as I've said before, and I'll say again, I don't think pronouns are worth risking your livelihood over. But when you're not in a situation governed by the Equality Act, it's more important than ever to resist this dictatorship of our speech. A vicious, oppressive cult that is trying to shut women up and push back our rights doesn't deserve courtesy. So this is from her website, uh, from the original court ruling, and she says, um, this is like an excerpt from something, she says, I wouldn't lie to a child. If a, if a child says, miss, are you a man or a woman? I would question whether someone who couldn't answer that honestly should be in that position of responsibility with children. You shouldn't lie to kids or expect to lie about someone's sex. So she's got this blind belief, this a philosophical belief that people can't change sex. So you think people can change sex? Is that what you're saying, Katie? It's not a blind belief that human beings can't change sex. It's a fact. A fact that many trans-identifying people are quite open and honest about. I see Buck Angel has been getting loads of hate from the gender nutters for saying stuff like this. Pointing out that so-called trans women and trans men aren't actually women and men. And here is Blair White's response agreeing that there is no need to lie to the world. Katie isn't even pretending that it's this thing they call gender but can never define. No, he is strongly implying here that people can change sex. Oh, do tell us how it's done. You could win a Nobel Prize. If, some, you know, if someone was to ask me, am I a man or a woman? And I'd say a woman, because obviously... Because, obviously, what? This sounds like an admission that Katie sees womanhood as a performance of femininity, which he seems to do quite well, better than I can probably, and I'm okay with that. From what I can see and hear of Katie in this video, he can pass as a woman, but taking wrong sex hormones and whatever else you've done doesn't make you a woman, Katie. If you say you are a woman, then you are lying. And she then says that I would be lying to say that. And then he's saying I shouldn't be in the position of responsibility with children. Like, as I don't know, as a teacher or a, like a guides leader or a parent. Like, it's just disgusting. Um, like, well, I don't know, vile. Why is it disgusting and vile to say that someone who lies to kids about what sex they are shouldn't be in a position of responsibility with them? Have you really thought this one through, Katie? how it could enable grooming of children. Do you actually have any arguments or is it all about your man feels? Now, the next thing from Maya that Katie talks about, I'm not actually gonna show you what he says because he becomes virtually unintelligible with anger, very decorous, feminine anger, of course, but it's impossible to follow and he takes ages getting to the point. It's 21 minutes into his video if you decide you want to be tortured. Right, this is what he objects to. In a discussion on the new hate crime legislation in Scotland, someone says, it occurs to me that people who like to beat up men because they are wearing women's clothes are unlikely to be doing so because the victim may have a female gender identity. They're going to be doing it because they are outraged by the public flouting of gender norms. I agree with this. Some people, usually men, will use difference as an excuse to be violent and gender nonconformity in both sexes, but especially men, offends their macho pride. Maya responds with, I think they may also be doing it because they recognise, or at least perceive, a person involving others as non-consensual participants in a sexual act, and this is what they are outraged at. Obviously, no one should be beating anyone up, but for example, in relation to single sex spaces, they exist to provide a buffer of propriety, dignity and privacy, so that people are not put in a position of where boundaries are pushed and non-consexual sexual acts, e.g. exposure and voyeurism, are facilitated. So Maya offers another reason why cross-dressing men might get violently attacked, whatever they call themselves. Remember the tweet she is responding to doesn't mention transgenderism and nor does she. 
that there can be a sexual element to cross-dressing is beyond doubt. I mean, you're not seriously denying it, are you, Katie? It would seem to be confirmed by the large number of selfies posted on social media of men in dresses in women's public toilets and changing rooms, flaunting themselves and sometimes doing other things. I'm not going there. Voyeurism and exposure are indeed non-consensual sexual acts and not that uncommon. Maya did not say that all or even many of those men who claim to be women do these things. She said that the recognition or perception that sexual gratification is what cross-dressing men can be about is a reason why they might get attacked. Trans people aren't, this is disgusting, um, you know, trans people aren't involving others in non-consensual sex acts. Well, some are. In my video entitled Obsessed With dot dot dot, which is number six in my Awful Arguments by Trans Activists series, I show a couple of absolutely disgusting tweets of those men who pretend to be women involving Baroness Nicholson, who is in her 70s, in non-consexual sex. And then there's the National Union of Students, former employee Jess Bradley, who justified the assault on me, saying it was the same as punching a Nazi, getting suspended from his post at the NUS for some rather unwomanly behaviour. So don't give me that shite, Katie Montgomery. Men who claim to be women are the same as men who don't. Some are good and some are bad. What are you talking about? I'm just living my life. Yeah, you're just living your life mocking, smearing and defaming women who are standing up for our rights against entitled men like you. But at least you don't behave like a disgusting perv. Great. Gender fascists reserve the right to mock us, threaten us, dehumanise us, abuse us, lie about us, try to silence us, to hurt our livelihoods, and they see referring to someone according to their sex as harassment. For crying out loud, nobody wants to harass you. We just want you to get out of our sports, our spaces, our lives, unless you're invited in, and leave us alone. That's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.